Hey guys, Chris here with The Good Old Gamer. So today, we're finally doing it. The one video I know many of you guys have really been waiting for. Today, we're going to take a look at AMD's FX series CPUs. So this is going to include both Bulldozer and Piledriver, and we're going to see how it compares to all of the other CPUs that we've tested thus far. And is it really that good or really that bad? Today, we will be answering that question definitively. So stick around and check it out. So as per usual, starting off over at a non-tech, this is gonna be a little bit different because they actually do a really good job going over the new bulldozer architecture. And I seriously recommend every one of you actually read this for yourself. Links will be in the description below. Today, we're just gonna go over a few of the more interesting bits. Now, as you can see here, these are the instructions per cycle that they have on each architecture. What becomes clearly evident is that under certain conditions, you have wider instructions on the FX series compared to the Phenom 2, that equals the Intel Core series, but then you also lose instructions per cycle once you go into different parts of the CPU. This is where things get a little bit interesting is in the integer execution. Each bulldozer module features two fully independent integer cores. And this is how you get your four, six, and eight cores, is because they count each integer core independently. Each core has its own integer scheduler, register file, and 16 kilobytes of L1 cache. And the shared FP core, so that's your floating point core. A single bulldozer module has a single shared FP core for use by the two primary threads. If there's only a single FP thread available, it is given full access to the FP execution hardware. Otherwise, the resources are shared between the two threads. So this is the reason why Bulldozer is not technically a full eight core CPU on the high end, and it's also not really a quad core. It's because part of it is doubled up and part of it is not. Compared to the Quad Phenom 2, AMD's 8-core Quad Module, so it's really kind of hard to tell what to call this thing, FX sees no drop in floating point execution resources. AMD's architecture has always had independent scheduling for integer and floating point instructions, and we see the same number of execution ports between the Phenom 2-core and the FX modules. Here they go over the Phenom 2's lack of both SSE4 and AVX support. This is something that Bulldozer does support. Unfortunately, this means that the peak FP throughput running through x87, SSE2, 3 workloads remains unchanged compared to the previous generation. Bulldozer will only be faster in newer SSE, AVX, and FMA instructions are used or if clock speed is significantly higher than that of the Phenom 2. Since the release of the Phenom 2 X6, AMD's major advantage has been in heavily multi-threaded workloads, particularly using floating point workloads thanks to the sheer number of resources available per chip. Bulldozer actually takes a step back in this regard as a result, and you will see some of the same workloads perform worse, if not the same, as the outgoing Phenom 2 X6. So this is not boding too well for the FX series at this point. Now there's a lot more to it. I just wanted to go over a few of the key bits of information and that being two integer schedulers and pipelines and one FP scheduler. So essentially you have dual integer cores and a single FP core. So is it really a full core? This is the reason why they're calling it a module. It's not really two separate cores, but it is under certain circumstances. At other times, it's not. So this is a very odd architecture and design that AMD bet very heavily on. First off, let's take a look at the hardware we used. So first off, for the Bulldozer CPU, I use the AMD FX 4100, and for Piledriver, the refined revision of Bulldozer, I used the AMD FX 
6300 and this was on a 990fx am3 plus motherboard which was donated by harry patch boy he also donated the fx 6300 so if you see him down in the comment section below please thank him for helping me get this stuff on hand now on to the benchmarks starting off with cinebench r15 uh we can see that the scores on the fx series not exactly awesome here with the 4100 coming in at 69 points and the FX 6300 coming in at 73 points, this is a far cry away from both Sandy and Ivy Bridge, and honestly, it's actually behind the Phenom CPUs. Moving on over to Blender, we see that our render times in seconds here, we had 781 on the 6300 and 873 seconds on the 4100 and once again this isn't even in the same ballpark so we're going to actually compare most of the fx series to both the phenoms and the older generations because this is something that we're going to see throughout and honestly this is about twice what we're seeing over here but compared to the old phenoms we do see a pretty good advantage especially on pile driver coming in well ahead of the phenom 2. Moving on over to CPU-Z, once again, comparing Intel to AMD on this test is silly, but comparing AMD to AMD is just fine. We do see some pretty decent gains here going up from 147 points all the way up to 162 and 175 respectively. So there's some gains to be had there in the single thread performance test. Now moving on over to what should be the FX's wheelhouse, we see the integer performance coming in at 4,082 points and 4,202. This is far behind the other AMD CPUs. We can see that the Phenom 2 coming in at 5,517 is significantly ahead of the FX series. Moving on over to the FP32, however, we do see this script get flipped a little bit with the FX series actually taking a pretty good jump over the Phenom 2 and Phenom. With a score of 358 on the FX 4100, surprisingly even beating out the more refined FX 6300 on this particular test. So that's actually a little strange, but not out of this world. And while it is a pretty good bump and does match the uh, first generation core series pretty well, we can see that it's nowhere near the level of Sandy and Ivy Bridge. Sorry, my uh, graph here got a little scrunched as you guys can see here, but we can still make out what it is that I'm trying to go for. So this is the cache and memory latency test here uh, from Ida64. So we can see that the memory latency at 66 nanoseconds is a decent bit better than the Phenom, but it's about on par with the Phenom 2. Not really too much difference, and realistically, I would just chalk that up to margin of error. Looking at the Phenom 2's L3 cache, we can see it was actually superior at 29.4 nanoseconds versus 33 nanoseconds, and the L2 cache at 5.4 nanoseconds is significantly faster than the 13-ish nanoseconds on the Phenom 2. L1 cache also increased in latency, but this is something that we saw on the core series as well. So that obviously didn't really affect Intel, so I'm not going to expect that doing too much here. However, the much larger L2 and L3 latencies compared to the Phenom 2 obviously have some effect here. Now putting it all together, the overall using the Pentium D830 as the baseline as 100%, we can see the FX 4100 coming in at 222% ahead and then 224% or 25 if you want to round up on the pile driver. Now this is far away from Sandy Bridge and it's close-ish to the first generation core series, but realistically it's really not too much better. In fact, it's actually a little bit worse than the Phenom 2 and about on par with Phenom 1. Looking at it this way, comparing it to the old K8 architecture, the Athlon 64, using that as 100%, we can see that we're only 22% ahead and 24% ahead, respectively. 
Moving on up to the E8400 as the baseline as 100%, we can actually see the FX series is actually behind by about 5%. So this is a 2011 CPU competing basically on par with old 2006 Conroe and 2008 Wolfdale as far as IPC is concerned. And then switching it up with the 2600K as the baseline, we can see that these are about 40% behind. A little bit more than 40% in comparison to Intel's leading architecture and still current architecture. Well, alrighty guys, there it is. We finally have the numbers to go ahead and see exactly where the FX series stacks up. Honestly, this was much worse than I was expecting. I figured it was going to be somewhere around the Phenom 2 level just because of all the reviews and stuff that I read back in the day. But honestly, in some of the tests, it actually loses to the Phenom 2 pretty bad. And I don't know why AMD didn't just stick with the K10 architecture and enhance upon that, maybe some faster cache. Uh, obviously, the new instruction set would help out. I really don't know why they didn't go that route. They obviously made a huge gamble with the Bulldozer and FX series, and it did not pay off. And everybody out there that's like, I don't know how AMD made it through that time period. I don't know either, because you have to realize from 2011 till 2017, this is the CPU that they were trying to sell you and I and businesses and everybody else. Uh, you know, when you look at those numbers compared, especially to like Sandy and Ivy Bridge, it's like, why would I do that? Um, only under very specific circumstances with very specific software could I see the AMD FX series being a viable option. Now, as a consumer, considering most of our software are mostly single thread heavy and still continues to be at this point, it's less of an issue than it was but it's still very, very important to have strong single thread or at least competitive single thread performance uh, to go ahead and get the most out of your CPU. So this was a gamble that AMD made and it did not pay off. Now I wanna go ahead and thank all my patrons for helping me get all this stuff on hands. Once again, Harry Patch Boy, thank you for the motherboard and CPU. This way we were able to get, go ahead and do the testing here. That's awesome. I want to thank you guys, and if you guys want to help support me and go ahead and help me get this stuff on hands, please consider becoming a patron over on Patreon. For as little as $1 a month, that really helps me out and get this stuff on hands. And if you guys like this video, please hit that like button, please subscribe, please share with friends, that really helps me out. And let me know what you guys think down in the comments section below. Were you expecting this level of a blowout? I think we all knew that it was not going to compete with Sandy and Ivy Bridge, but I was not expecting it to be 40-ish percent slower. That blew me away. But let me know what you guys think down in the comment section below. I'm really interested to hear that. And that's all I have for today. And I will catch you guys in the next video.